Boss monsters can be the make it or break it for a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Either you're summoning a powerful monster that destroys the game, or you're coping. And in today's video, we are going to be ranking some of the most powerful boss monsters in the game post Phantom Nightmare, giving you guys a little bit of insight on what are the top boss monsters you should be using in your deck, or the level one crooks in the game. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay guys, so the criteria for this boss monsters tier list is fairly simple. We're gonna be ranking every single one of these boss monsters on how effective they can be in current day Yu-Gi-Oh. Hopefully this can help you guys decide on what type of boss monsters you should be playing or what type of deck you can be playing. I'll be making more tier lists throughout the week to help you guys on that journey. And also as per usual, if you guys think I miss a particular boss monster, go ahead and let me know in the pinned comment. I will try to include your favorite boss monster the next time around. And just to be 100% clear, what we considered a boss monster for this tier list was either a game ending Yu-Gi-Oh card or a card that provide a considerable amount of control on the game. There are some cards that are really important for some Yu-Gi-Oh strategies that can also be strong, but if they did not fit that criteria, we did not include them. Let's go ahead and start off with Sussy Code Talker. Access Code Talker performs one particular function, winning the game. That's probably the only time that you should be summoning Access Code Talker in current day Yu-Gi-Oh. If you're turn one making your boss monster, it is Sussy Code. <laughs> you gonna get sussed out. You also benefit from Access Code Talker if you play multiple Link monsters with multiple different attributes. Unfortunately, I don't think that Access Code Talker is even that strong right now because it does destroy. I'm gonna put it in situational. It's a card that if you're playing a heavy Link based deck that plays a ton of attributes, you should play. But any other Yu-Gi-Oh deck, you could get away with it, especially since you just summon powerful monsters anyways. Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. This card is really good at stopping monster effects and the best thing about it is that it negates the monster effect and not destroys it. Right now, destroying cards is not the best thing in the world. I actually have to say, Appaloosa by itself, I mean, don't do that. But Appaloosa with other weapons? Holy crap, this card can be really good. Appaloosa with backup is an insane Yu-Gi-Oh card right now because stopping monster effects but not destroying them can be incredibly important against some of the best decks. If you are able to have an Appaloosa and a way to prevent your opponent from attacking over it, you could secure a game, but it's obviously a card that does need help to help you do that. Barone de Floor is also a card that 100% needs help. Barone is actually a still a great Yu-Gi-Oh card, but if you're just summoning Barone de Floor with no other cards, you're losing. Barone typically has one function to stop your opponent from using hand interruptions on your turn, and then another function to hopefully stop your opponent or to just be a super polymerization target. Cause it's a warrior. Barone doesn't fit and help. Barone should be an underboss because it can fit multiple strats and its pop effect can facilitate some decks to combo plus. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Okay, let's do that again then. I actually do agree with that. Originally, I thought Barone the floor was a card that needs help and it does have its flaws, but chat, I think we can put it in underboss. So one of the biggest flaws with Barone the Floor is that it does destroy cards, and that can trigger so many things for your opponent to be able to do, it's ridiculous. But the good thing about Barone the Floor is that it's incredibly generic. When you're going second, it can destroy your opponent's cards, and it can even provide disruption. It's versatile enough to be summoned on your first turn to help protect and insulate your combos, and it's still great enough to provide a huge threat to your opponent. I think Underboss is exactly where it needs to be. Though I ain't gonna lie, I can't wait till we get to the newer cards, cause I uh, got some thoughts about them. We are, bro, why are you? Chat, hear me out. Hear me out about Black Luster Soldier. This can be the strongest card in the game. You're not listening, no. How many decks play light and dark monsters? Look, I know we're in year of the fire or whatever, but let's go back to light and dark monsters. Make light and dark monsters great again. Black Luster Soldier only requires a light and a dark monster to summon and it can attack twice or it can banish a monster on the field. Facts feed my pit steals, they starve it. And Foil Cali makes a return. Oh no. Bro, technically, Black Luster Soldier is at least better than Axis Code Talker. It can banish monsters. It doesn't destroy them, which is good right now. Yeah, Les deserves to be a level zero crook. 
It's like two bestials in one, except for your graveyard. All right, guys, in all serious, Black Luster Soldier used to be the most amazing card, but it's a level one crook. I think that Son Goku said it best. You young whippersnappers don't know the power of Black Luster Soldier, especially if there is an honest in hand. Bro, y'all don't know the power of Black Luster Soldier. You guys will soon, you'll soon understand. Did he just say honest? Yes, I said honest. Honest, Cali, you need help. Honest, the ultimate boss monster. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the sauce, chat. Black Luster is the sauce. These young ones are disrespected, honest. Bro, Koval, tell them. Number one infectious Buzz King is a new card from Mickey's of Millennia, and boy, I gotta tell you about some stupid effects. The first thing is that once during every one of your turns, you can take one of your opponent's card in the graveyard and attach it to them. This is pretty good at stopping powerful decks like Fire King or even Rescue Ace from getting into the resources that they need. The effect number two is that when it's Exceed Summon, this big beetle allows you to look into your opponent's extra deck and get rid of a card. I know you remember cards like Cash Tira Unicorn and Diabolus the Mind Hacker. This guy, little easier to summon and still has a similar effect. And the last effect, guys, it can detach a material, destroy a card on your opponent's field, and to make things worse, it ain't once per turn. Bro, ain't no way, chat. Why, why do they make a card like this? Where do we rank it? Oh, wait, it is once per turn? Huh. Wait, no, there's no way. You can only use the following effects once per turn. Oh. All right. So, yeah. This is like the Exceed version of Access Code Talker, kind of. It does allow you to be able to get rid of your opponent's cards in the extra deck, but I assume you are not going to be summoning in this card on your first turn. But I ain't gonna lie, if it wasn't once per turn on the destruction, a lot better. Do not mistake it though, this card is still fairly strong. Can't even honest it? Oh, Chaos Angel, oh my God, guys. Chaos Angel, when special summon banishes a card on the field, but more importantly, it protects itself from all monster effects, as well as your other synchro monsters and prevents your monsters from being destroyed by battle. Chaos Angel can genuinely outright win games. I'm gonna put it in Underboss. There are times where Chaos Angel is just a useless Yu-Gi-Oh card. Like if your opponent is playing spells and trap cards to be able to remove this card off the field. Then there's other times, like later in the game, or if your opponent doesn't play those cards, where this card just outright wins a game. To this day, I have not played someone who has successfully summoned Chaos Angel against me. RJ, you ain't play no good Yu-Gi-Oh players then. Chimera the Illusion Beast has a rather unique effect. Since it's an illusion monster, it can't be destroyed by battle, and it can't destroy anything, but when it battles an opponent's monster, it permanently negates the monster's effect and changes the monster's attack to zero. This creates situations where it's close to access code talker. It just can win a game. But any other time other than that? Uh, eh. Colorless, the new Dark World monster. This card can destroy all of your opponent's monsters and allow you to discard Dark World monsters, which is really crazy. Where would I put this powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card that actually has the ability to stop the opponent in their tracks? I'ma easily put it in level one crook. Konami really goofed on this Yu-Gi-Oh card, guys. It requires rainbow? It's a dark world and you're requiring rainbow to make colorless? Get me out of here. To be honest, guys, I don't even think dark world players will genuinely play this card either. It's just not a card not worth playing because of its requirements. And the trash is better because dark world only has oatmeal raisin cookies. <laughs> Bro, you can Prisma for rainbow. Yeah, he's coping. Destiny Hero Destroy Your Phoenix Enforcer is quite the interesting card. It's a snack that smiles back, destroys itself or other cards on the field and your opponent's cards. Holy crap, I actually have to ask you guys, what do you think about this card? Because destruction isn't great, but this card can destroy your own cards, which could be great. Like imagine if a Fire King player plays this, they'd be cooking. DPE made any deck a tier deck. Bro, I used to lose to that card alone. Yeah, but that was like two years ago. We're not raking these cards on merit. We're raking them on the right now. Unless you still lose to it, which that, that's interesting. I think that this card could be really good. I'm actually going to put it in neat help. You guys aren't thinking about it. Before this card used to be used to destroy your opponent's cards, which could be cataclysmic now. But if you use this card to destroy your own cards to gain their effects, 
and potentially get rid of an opponent's other card that doesn't play around being destroyed, it could be crazy, which is why I think it's in the knee tell. I don't know, guys. I might be cooking up a, a Fire King deck with DBE in it. Cookage. Diabelle Star of the Dark Witch does absolutely way too much in a Yu-Gi-Oh card. We didn't want to put it in here because it is a facilitator, but it also is a boss monster. A lot of people don't even know that Diabelle Star of the Dark Witch has a second effect when it's sent to the graveyard during the opponent's turn. Brings itself right back and gets you more resources. This card is a control card. It helps facilitate finishing plays, but more importantly, the card is also a card that gathers you a ton of resources. It is an overpowered top boss Yu-Gi-Oh card. Diablo Mommy, holy God, <laughs> chat's gonna get me bad. I thought it was Diaby Mommy. Diablo Stara's coat because I can't afford wanted. <laughs> All right, guys, where do we put Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus? This one's gonna be a little bit tough too. To be honest, guys, anytime you summon Zeus, it could be a game-winning situation. I personally think that Zeus right now is an underboss, and I'm gonna have to say it's because it does not destroy, and if you get a huge Zeus on the field, a lot of decks just can't handle it. Zeus is actually a top boss because it's easy to hit and doesn't destroy, it just sends. Since the best deck currently needs destruction, it can end that matchup. I also agree. This card can be monstrous against some of the best decks in the game. Earthbound Grasha requires a Earthbound Fusion Monster and a Synchro Monster to sub it. And in return, any monster it battles, attack is reduced to zero. Also, if your opponent does get rid of it, you get to spell summon Earthbound Monster from your deck or extra deck. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna put it right here. The amount of resources that you need to summon this monster is ridiculous. It's just not worth it. Exo Stepsister Magnifica actually does stand up on the test of time. I really wanna say this is one of the best cards in the game. Not only is it incredibly easy to summon for Exo Sister, it's a card that can banish a card on the field. Then it can turn itself into Exo Sister Milkus, which can banish another card. On top of that, isn't this card game ending too? Bro, I don't actually, I, it's, mm, I'm gonna say a bold take. I think the Stepsisters, they have a top boss Yu-Gi-Oh card. Milkis is crazy. Bro, bro, think about it, chat. She can attack twice. You, If you make Milkis, you can get a free search and you get two vanishes. She's disruption, she's a game finisher and she can get you resources. If only the rest of the deck wasn't power corrupt. You know, you know, there is a lot of graveyard uses going on right now, so it's not bad. The new Ultimate Flame Swordsman from Maze of Millennia is a pretty decent card. Not only can he finish the game himself by doubling his attack to almost 7,000, he can also destroy a card on the field. Think of Zodiac Dryden. I like to think that this card is a monster that does need help. Him by himself is not enough to be able to win games. You have to remember, he still does destroy cards. But if you complement him with some other cards to help stop your opponent, Maybe it's hand traps, cards like Cash Tier or Fenrir, or even negation type monsters like Put on the Floor. It becomes a lot better of a Yu Gi Oh card because you can just use him to pinpoint focus on certain cards that don't want to be destroyed. You got to say the top boss in Joey Wheeler's voice. Nyeh! I don't know if I sound like Joey or Roger. Nyeh! It's a top boss, isn't he? I'm New York, Timberlands. <laughs> Definitely, Roger. How appropriate. The third category for a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Bro! You can't be roasted my man's Joey like that, dog. Have you seen all the Joey cards in the flavor text in Joey's voice? Yeah, I have. Bro, I'll read one off, guys. Hey, this mighty Lissick man can swing his sword so fast, that's more than the speed of sound. I don't sound like Jilly. Lunaris Empen is a card that can almost do everything by itself, and it's mainly because your opponent needs to summon monsters in the fence position before they can get some really good traction going. I'm gonna say that it's an underboss because of its ability to be able to gain you additional normal summon, get you resources through a search, but also disrupt your opponent's monsters and become incredibly hard to battle. I mean, this may single-handedly be the reason why Fluanderese is crazy. It like falls in line with so many other of the best boss monsters to this day. Wouldn't it actually be a top boss since it does all that chat? 100% Impen is the guy. Burn! What do you think about Florida Simple? I like it, why? Yeah, chat, it's a top boss, but we all hate it. You know, I'm not gonna lie, the 
Fire King boss monster is, it's underwhelming. If you summon this card by yourself, you just get to destroy all monsters on the field. Then you can probably destroy a smaller tribe. It does have the recursion, but I think the most scary thing is that it's being used in combination with cards. If you have Fire Sanctuary on the field, you can exceed someone on your opponent's turn, which could be good if they don't like destruction. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's actually worse than these cards. I, it definitely needs help and isn't good most of the time. I'm gonna put it in situation. Gate Guardian. Gate Guardian is easily one of the best decks in the game, right? There's no way we put it lower than top boss, right? It's going up here, right? It's going down. Goblin Biker, Big Head, Gobunga. Not only does it allow you to add a goblin monster, you can also attach monsters on the field, including your monsters that your opponent has to him. It also allows you to attach other goblin cards to this card during each end phase. Yeah, guys, let's not even lie. This is easily a top boss. It does everything, controls the game, and it also gets you resources. I don't think it ends the game by itself, but with all of the disruption and all the power you'll be having, it does a pretty good job. Are Goblin Bikers gonna be good? That is a great question. I think that Goblin Bikers will have some initial success, but overall success, mm, I'm not sure. You guys are gonna find it really funny where I put Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity. This card could end your opponent's turn if your opponent wasn't prepared for it or not smart or you were gonna win anyways. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity can be a really frustrating card to play against, which is why regardless of how powerful it is, I advocate for its ban. It just doesn't like promote good fun Yu-Gi-Oh. But also on the bad side, why this card probably will never be banned is because it's just simply not a good card. In theory, you can shut down your opponent's turn, but if you're doing all of that anyways, you were probably gonna win. On top of that, with a lot more back row heavy decks in the game, you could be summoning this card for absolutely nothing. They could just not care. I would say that Lady Labyrinth is a card that needs help. I'm not even sure if we should consider her a boss monster anymore, just a facilitator. 3000 attack isn't enough. The protection effect only when a card is phased down and she gets you trap cards. She, I mean, as far as a boss monster, she's pretty much a level one crook. Disrespecting Milkers? I'm not disrespecting Labyrinth, I'm just acknowledging that this isn't a great boss monster in today's Yu-Gi-Oh. SP Little Knight is a controversial Yu-Gi-Oh card and it's mainly because it's almost $140 a copy. This card is incredibly good at messing up your opponent's turn, but by itself, it's typically not enough. It absolutely needs help because it doesn't win by itself. Definitely needs help, but it's still so good. Yeah, I think both of those things can be true. I think it can be a really good card like these cards right here and still also need help to be able to facilitate. Looks this to a normal summon? <laughs> Bro, this card does lose to like every normal summon in the game. It's bad, chat. Don't buy it. Sinister Sovereign Long Yuan is actually an incredible card. There are a ton of field and continuous spell and trap cards running around and monsters that don't want to be banished. If I had to put Long Yuan somewhere, it would be under boss. It's good. The only problem with Long Yuan is that it requires worm monsters to summon. If this card were generic, I think everybody would play. Sinister, Long Yuan, Burn and Time has been called? Holy crap, take me back. I think Mirror Jade's effect to be able to banish a card on the field is fine. And it also has the ability to get you resources depending on what you're sending from the extra deck to the graveyard. The only problem with Mirror Jade is that it doesn't necessarily do enough on its own. I think that's pretty ironic because Mirror Jade does have a lot of text, but these cards just do their a lot of text a little better. It also nukes the board. That is not something we want to do right now. Promethean Princess is going to be a top boss Yu-Gi-Oh card. For the people that don't know what this card does, not only does it summon a fire monster from your graveyard to the side of the field, it also can destroy a monster on your opponent's side of the field and bring a fire monster back. It also has the potential to destroy one of your own fire monsters, which likely will gain its effect and bring itself back. This is like the ultimate control card, guys. It's one of the best monsters in the entire game. And when Phantom Nightmare comes out, go ahead and pick up your ultra rare copies as soon as you can for a reasonable price. The new Raid Raptor monster requires five level 13 monsters. But we don't have a single level 13 monster. What monster in the game is level 13? Yet? Oh, do not tell me we're getting a level 13. Don Dragster can get to level 13. Ah, just summon five Don Dragsters and make this card. Of course, guys, it's Raid Raptor, so they're gonna find a way to summon it without using five monsters. 
but I think it's a little preposterous and its effects are a little old. I think that this card will actually be pretty good at winning games, but that's pretty much where it's gonna stop. I think that it's kind of cool that we have a new rank 13 monster since for the last 20 years, we've only had 12, but let's chill out on this card being the most amazing card in the game right now. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, Master Duel players have never experienced that. You guys should consider yourself lucky. Right now, I would say Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is, I would put it in needs help. This card is really good the later the game gets and the lower your opponent's resources are. I don't like the cards that you would have to play to use it, but inside of a deck like Branded, it's, it does the job fairly well. Rescue Ace Turbulence is an example of one of the best boss monsters in the game. Get your resources, and a lot of people forget that it can get rid of cards, all while being an easy to summon monster that's 3,500 attack. Skull Guardian is a mini, uh, not really mini, because it can get to like 4,000 attack, but on the floor that also searches monsters from your deck to your hand. This card is incredibly good when you have no box on the field, but you would need no box on the field. So that immediately puts him in needs help, right chat? Sky Crisis is also an amazing card. This boss monster is the counter to a lot of other boss monsters in the game. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put him under under boss. He's not a card that you wanna start off with, but a card that you finish off with getting rid of powerful threats in the game. And that itself could be game ending. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, guys. Whew. Yo, it can attack all your opponent's monsters. It also can flip them face down to prevent them from being used for Link summons or even Exceed summons. It's a game ending card. It's a very powerful card. Top boss? They would hate us if we put it there. I think right now in Yu-Gi-Oh, I would consider it an underboss. And the fact that it can get rid of monsters without destroying them, I think is huge. All right, guys, we'll never forget Goth Mommy. Where do we put Underworld Goddess? This one's gonna be a tough one. I think Underworld Goddess definitely has a good place into the game. It gets rid of really big problematic monsters and it's known as White Woman Jump Scare for a reason. When you never see it coming, she's there. Crook, Underboss, Situational? Ooh, I think that Underworld Goddess is an underboss. It's not just because she can get rid of an opponent's monster, which don't get me wrong, getting rid of a monster without having to destroy it is crazy, but it's also because she can negate graveyard special summons, which is really, really good right now. Oh, and she negates all of your opponent's monsters on the field. People forget about that. Lastly is going to be Yubel, the new one from Phantom Nightmare. Okay, so Yubel in by itself just looking at its effects not that great if this card came out maybe a couple of years ago when cards that couldn't be destroyed by battle or card effects was like ridiculous over the top then yeah i'm not gonna deny it though like still not being able to be destroyed by battle or card effects is still amazing i would put it in situational for now i think it depends on what you're investing to make you bell if you're investing your opponent's monsters hella cool if you're investing your monsters not as cool. And that just depends on the particular situation that you put yourself in. I almost forgot that Vados is considered a boss monster, also considered a hand trap too. It can be summoned to your opponent's side of the field by destroying their field spell, and it gets you an Ashen Continuous Trap card. It also can destroy all monsters on the field when it's destroyed itself. Yeah, that's about right. I think Vados will have a little bit more effectiveness as a hand trap, being able to destroy Fire King Island when your opponent activates its effect, and then in turn also being able to wipe their entire board, including the Vados, because of Island's effect. But as far as one of the toughest, best boss monsters in the game, and the reason why you should build the deck, it's a level one crook. <laughs> <coughs> And that's all that I got for the Boss Monsters tier list, guys. Holy crap, it's been a lot of them. I think it was 32 this time around. If you guys have a problem with a Boss Monsters tier list, let me know what you think, and let me know on some other Boss Monsters that I missed. Can't wait to see what you have to say.